like to introduce Chief Jerry Williams to share more important information about this investigation. Chief. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Stanton. Um, and good morning to everyone. So today I'm saddened to share with you more stories of violence in our communities. But I'm proud of the work that our agencies, both federal, state, and local, are doing as partners. We are working together. We are using new technologies and sharing resources with one goal in mind, and that's stopping violence and making our community safer. You all may remember the arrest that we made on December 17th of Cleophas Cook Cooksey. He was arrested and booked for killing his mother and stepfather near 13th Street and Highland Avenue. Phoenix police officers arrested Cooksey on scene, and he's been in jail since. But our detectives didn't stop there. They kept digging because that's what good police officers do. They kept working with our partner agencies, and they found more victims. Seven more, dating back to November 27th, when two men were shot to death near 16th Street and Indian School. Evidence from that scene points to Cooksey. Not even a week later, on December 2nd, a security guard was shot and killed near 44th Avenue and Indian School. Evidence again links that scene to Cooksey. December 11th, a man was shot and killed near 500 East Harrison in Avondale. Evidence from that scene points to Cooksey. Just two more days later, on December 13th, a man is shot and killed near 55th Avenue in Camelback in Glendale. Evidence from that scene points directly to Cooksey. <clears throat> December 15th, another man was shot and killed near 58th Avenue in Camelback, again in Glendale. Again, that evidence points to Cooksey. Less than two hours later, a woman is kidnapped to, near 66th Avenue in Bethany Home. Her sexually assaulted body was found the next day in an alley near 1700 South 3rd Street in Phoenix. She too was shot to death, and evidence from that scene points to Cooksey. The very next day, Phoenix police arrested Cooksey and booked him for killing his mother and her husband. Nine deaths, three weeks, nine people shot in our communities in Avondale, Glendale, and Phoenix. Let me take a minute to recognize the victims. Andrew Remillard, Parker Smith, Salem Richards, Jesus Real, Latore Beckford, Christopher Cameron, Maria Villanueva, Renee Cooksey, and Edward Nunn. If we can find a positive today, if we can find something positive today, we can look around this room and on the stage. Standing together, we have Glendale, Avondale, FBI, ATF, our elected officials, and in the audience, we have the detectives who are part of this too, who make this all happen. Partners standing together, committed to stopping violence in our communities, because we know that criminals are not bound by geographical boundaries or by city limits. They go wherever they can to find their next victim. And today, here is proof that our Valley law enforcement is committed to working together regionally, sharing information regionally, sharing resources regionally, and capturing criminals wherever they may go and hide. The Phoenix Crime Gun Intelligence Center played a pivotal role in piecing together this evidence and giving our detectives the bits and pieces that they needed that allowed us to identify and locate the suspect in these crimes and hopefully bring justice to the families. Technology today is allowing us to quickly analyze evidence and compare it, not just in Phoenix, but throughout our region. Crime suppression in the coming years is going to be dependent on several things. One, our communities and police working together, our police officers working with one another, and using technologies and our partnerships throughout the country and accurately linking related crimes. So my sincere thanks to my peers who are represented here, my federal peers who are represented too, because we can't do this alone. 